Hey everyone, Tom Morkis here, founder of Insurgent Publishing and the creator of Publishers Empire. And today I wanted to dig into Amazon Kindle SEO because I feel like there's a lot of uh, misinformation out there on the topic of Amazon SEO and specifically Kindle SEO. And a lot of people, um, unfortunately, because they don't know it, they have great books, but they're not leveraging the techniques that will help them rank actually higher. Um, and then what you see is actually people who maybe don't deserve great credit um, and they kind of have kind of like spammy books, but know how to use SEO to their benefit and are ranking super high for keywords that don't even necessarily apply to them because they're using these things. So it's one of those things I, I you know, SEO is one of those things I always do a warning and say, it, it, with great power comes great responsibility. Um, and so I, I teach this and I'm sharing this with you guys today um, with that warning and to say that this is with an assumption that you're producing work that's worthwhile and deserves to be read. Um, and so without further ado, I want to introduce... Uh, the founder of Kindlepreneur, Dave Chesson, who's essentially an expert on Amazon SEO, one of the only guys that I really trust when it comes to Amazon SEO. So, Dave, thanks for being here. Hey, Tom. Hey, thanks for having me. Seriously. Cool. So, Dave and I were talking a little bit ago, like last week, I think, maybe even just earlier this week about um, SEO for, for Kindle. And he brought up this cool uh, acronym that basically hit all the key points that you want to look for when you're, when you're rocking and rolling Amazon uh, Kindle SEO. So I want to hand it over to him to give us kind of a broad overview of that. And what I'll do is I'm going to pull up a book uh, on Amazon so we can kind of follow along. So I don't know if you have a recommendation for a book, Dave. Um, otherwise, I'll just pull, pull something up. Uh, just go ahead and pull something up. Um, cool. A good one to kind of use perhaps would be to look at uh, Evernote. Just type in Evernote. There's a lot. It's kind of one of those where people will uh, spam out the SEO to try to get their Evernote book to the top, um, and then you'll see some actual legitimate ones too. So that can be a great example. Okay, perfect. Okay, cool. So, sh okay, so I just typed that in. So where do you want to start then? Okay, well, first, let's talk about what we're doing. I mean, you, you talked about Amazon SEO, but for those that might not be following that term, we're, we're, what we're talking about is ranking things higher for certain search terms. So if somebody types into Amazon search, um, you know, Evernote, what book is going to be ranking number one, two, and three? So we're going to look at the factors that will help your book to rank higher. And with that, I like to use the, the term stars. Now, not twinkle, twinkle little stars here. But the um, I'm talking about like S T A R S, okay? So overview the S T A R are the things that we can actually change to help improve the S at the end, the stars to make it plural. That's kind of one of those where you gotta really have some tactics and some techniques to really make that one change. So let's go ahead and jump into to stars, okay? The first, the S, is your subtitle, okay? Now, I know everybody's like, but you should start with the title. Nah, let's look at these. This is a great example right here, right? Okay. Notice that the title is just Evernote, but the subtitle is chock full of all these things, okay? Um, he's got catchy words, but more or less, like, look, he's even got Evernote Essentials in parentheses. Uh, I will tell you immediately the reason why he put Evernote Essentials in there is because Evernote Essentials is actually the top book. So if people are typing in <laughs> Evernote Essentials into the search, mm -hmm. Evernote Essentials, the, the real one will show up at the top, and this person is hoping that they'll show number two. So see, they'll get in front of more people by doing that. Now, your subtitle is your opportunity to put keywords inside of it without making it look too unnatural, okay? A title that's like the best Evernote tools and software and things to help you declutter your life, like that's just too much. Um, and the requirements that you have to put in the title are just too much. But in the subtitle, you can just throw that in there, make some changes, add as many you know, keywords as you want so that you can try to rank out. This is also where you can kind of look spammy too. So that's your subtitle, okay? Now let's look at title, okay? That's the T in stars. The title is, I, you know, it's not number one in the stars because your title actually needs to be catchy. It's kind of like your, your sales talk, right? People are going to look at the title. They're going to see it on the cover. And so you need to make it part sales copy. And then hopefully, if you can, put in your main keywords, all right? Because it is true the title actually is more important than the subtitle for keyword ranking. But as we'll get into in the last S, you know, you need to have good sales conversions to be able to actually rank above others, okay? So in the title, like I said, 
first, think sales copy. What attracts people? And then the second, the afterthought is, can I incorporate my main keyword in there? The one that I want my book to rank for, okay? So now let's look at about, okay? Or otherwise, book description. Now, the example we have here, look, you can see it immediately, right? It's got big word, discover, you know. Um, it's got different font size, right? That's probably an H2 tag making it so that you see, discover how a simple app can help you take back your life and achieve your peak performance, all right? Um, and, and when you expand, you can see the rest of the description. He's got H2 tags, H3 tags. I like to think of my description as a blog post, okay? And when I'm writing a blog post that I want to rank on Google, I need to use my keywords as many times as I can, looking natural, of course, and I need to use H tags and bullet you know, points and lists and bold words, all right? I would say, honestly, like a tiny, tiny micro percentage of people will actually read through a description, a book description, but they like to skim. So notice how this person has strategically laid it out so that it's skimmable. It's like a blog post. I'm going to roll through and see, is there anything that catches my eye? Something I want to, you know, look into. But it is also your opportunity to prove to Amazon and to Google, for that matter, that this is a, a URL, a page, a sales page that should rank higher for the rankings for the term like Evernote. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you even niche down and it's like Evernote tools or some other keyword phrase that you want to rank for, okay? So that's our about, or otherwise known as the book description. Mm -hmm. Let's move into reviews, okay? Reviews are just another opportunity in which people can further tell Amazon that your book really is about Evernote, okay? So let's face it, if you're trying to rank for Red Dog, okay, and your reviewers are only typing in Blue Dog, then why would Amazon think to rank you Red Dog? Okay, and that's a terrible example, but you, but you get my drift, right? Yep. So uh, if people are naturally putting that word into their review, then there's a good chance that people who are unbiased like you, okay, are honestly thinking that this book is about that term. So it's, it's actually more powerful than people think. Yep. Now, the way that you can get people to use your keyword, okay, inside of it is that your title has the keyword. I mean... A lot of times people re will refer to your title when they're doing a review. So that's, a that's why it's kind of important to get it in your title. But it's, again, the number one thing you want to do is have better sales conversion. And mm -hmm. that brings us up to our last and final S, our letter in stars, okay, is sales conversion. Amazon is all about making money. And, you know, let's, let's face it, it's... I don't disagree with them, right? I mean, they're a sales platform. So if people are typing in Evernote and more people are clicking on their number three ranked, okay, sales page than the number one or number two, then it continues to tell the Amazon algorithm that number three should be ranking number one. It's proof that number three converts better. So if you have higher traffic and therefore more sales on your page, Amazon will immediately say, oh, we made a terrible mistake. Let's move this guy up to number one instead of this number one guy. That way we'll all make more sales. Um, and so that's like the most powerful thing you can do in the end is increase your sales. So we had subtitle, title, about, reviews, and sales conversion. And that's stars. Awesome. I love it. So I was drawing on here with my mouse. It obviously didn't look great as we were doing it, but just to maybe highlight some of the stuff. I also did a control F. So one of the things I like to do when I'm doing keyword research is control F to find certain keywords that are, and how often people use them. So everything highlighted in yellow here is ever known, you know? And it's pretty impressive how stuff this is um, with the word ever known. Um, I also yeah. actually like, in a way, I actually am really impressed by how they did the about page here. It is really scannable. Like, even though this person is just totally doing this to, to game the system, I'm really impressed by how they have this laid out. I think this is a great thing to model. I like the bullet points. I like the H2 tags. Um, it is very scannable. Like you said, it's like a blog post. Absolutely. I approach my summaries, my, my description as a blog post. Um, you know, and with the understanding that people come to my blog post, they, there's actually a desire to read it. <laughs> people don't go to his description with the intents of reading it from, you know, 
Yeah. From the beginning to the end. They just want to get a good feel as to whether or not yeah. this is what they're looking for. Here's where this guy's uh, completely full of it, um, which is oh, what yeah. I, which is I want to get into real quick. It, it, and this is the fun part, is when you see things like this, Evernote as the editor. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Or here's another one I like. The publisher. Evernote. That yeah. one's funny. Here's here's some something that'll mess with your brain. John Scott. Is that a real name? Or did he name it John Scott because... The best seller in this category's name is S.J. Scott. To me, that's even that's really borderline shady. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. Oh yeah. So, and I, as a matter of fact, you'll yeah. find some of these where in the subtitle they'll actually have like um, inside the parentheses. So this guy used parentheses, but we'll see one that's like Evernote, comma Evernote app, comma Evernote tools, comma. It's like literally they will list out their target keywords. Now, if you find somebody that's right spamming like that. There we go. Click on that one. Okay. When you find somebody spamming like that, guess what? That's kind of cool because this person has now proven to you, um, hopefully they're good at what they do, um, that these are actually keywords they think that are niche enough to get more sales. Uh, is this guy working? You know, that depends on a billion other things. However, they've just listed their target keywords for you. It's like giant yep. sign. Here it is. Yeah. That's a really good point, actually. Talk about a great hack when you're doing uh, keyword research for a book in a certain genre. Um, and it's not to, and the point here it would be to, I would, I would never uh, uh, tell an author to put parentheses into a subtitle nope. uh, for legit books. To be honest with you, like if it's not anything more than just like kind of a, you know, um, an ebook thing that you, I don't know, whatever. But if it's like a m more legit, like either traditionally published book or you want to be perceived that way, I would never say put these parentheses thing in it. But I would say, hey, like like Dave just said, Evernote Essentials, Evernote Books, Time Management. So these are keywords then. That if you're doing something in the productivity niche or Evernote in particular, I'd use that. I would make sure I, that was in my about, and my my about section. Um, tell Absolutely. Me, real quick, I'm I'm curious. Do you think that editorial reviews impact ranking at all? They they are definitely a part of it. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, uh, the way to look at editorial reviews is that that's more words. That's more. That's like extending your uh, book description. Okay, the about section. Okay. Um. So yeah, definitely go into editorial, and it's just extending the amount of words and amount of times you can actually put in your keyword and things like that. Plus, I you know to tell you the truth, um, what was it like a year ago that Amazon would actually show more of the book description? Now that's like just this tiny yep. little part Look, you got to right show more it's yeah, nothing there it is oh, you get don't you, blink you'll miss it <laughs> exactly in, in, in fact because of the way it's designed you almost can't even um i i skip this part very often and i'm on always on amazon like and i miss yeah. the about and i have to scroll i realize i've scrolled past it and i have to scroll back up but what's interesting is they don't do that with the editorial reviews nope. um and so that's why i always encourage people to make sure that they have editorial reviews and honestly if i were to, to be a little bit more clever, I would make sure that they use the keyword in the editorial reviews because, hey, it can't hurt, right? So in this case, this is startups. And look at all the startup we have in here. These are legit quotes from real people. But what's important here, and that's what's important, I think, to understand is you can do this for like very legitimate books that are, are good, and you can... Mm -hmm. And you can use the same techniques that maybe spammers are using, but use them in an authentic, um, above-board, ethical way um, just by understanding how to place them. So here, we, we made sure that we had a lot of editorial reviews from people. And editorial reviews can be any review you put up there. I've actually seen people put fake reviews on here, which, again, is kind of upsetting to me. Um, and, so you, but you could, and you could technically do that as well. Um, we obviously wanted to keep ours above board and make sure these are from real people leaving real reviews. But what's cool is a lot of them you did use the word startup in it. And th this is one of the top-ranking books in startups. Um, so, again, it does a good job with the word. Uh, in, in a, um, here, it's number five. So it's dropped a little bit, but it's usually hovering around, you know, three, three or four. Um, but it's it's up there, and that's a competitive category. So it's interesting. Uh, how about biography? Do you think it matters in a biography at all? It, you know, an algorithm can crawl that, sure. But in all honesty, leave the biography to um, yep. to you as an author, okay. because that biography is going to carry with you to your other books too. So yep. um, trying to game that to that level, I think, is just you know, my new, whereas you want to make that all about selling why I'm an authority on the subject, why you want to read from me. So I wouldn't recommend that. But, you know, I just wanted to kind of close up and talking about totally. one last thing is, yep. is that for, 
for all the Tom Morgan listeners out there, look, we've talked about ways that, yeah, people can take this and they can like um, totally game the system, you know, and cheat the system. And we've even seen people who've done that in this example. But you guys who have been reading you know, Tom's stuff and, and, and listening to his podcast and everything, you guys don't need to game the system. You don't need to. What we're trying to do is just lay out the foundation, okay, to yep. make sure that your book has a better chance of getting more of Amazon's traffic. And, you know, using Tom's techniques and using, you know, his advice, you will be able to, you know, further your book so that you can beat the chaff that's out there. Like, yep. you know, this, the, 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 the gamers out there, right? Yep. Um, and just make sure that you're not falling behind because that gamer can beat you. If you forget to not use your keyword, you know, your target keywords in your description and, you know, and your subtitle, that gamer is going to have a chance to beat you, even yep. if your book is way better than theirs. Yep. And that's at bottom line. So Dave, hey, I just want to say thank you so much for being on the call with us today for for giving us this client, you know, this this quick down and dirty look at Amazon SEO. If anybody's interested in this topic, um, this this video you'll be watching is probably going to be watched on TomMorkies.com. So you're probably reading the corresponding blog post with it, which I hope is comprehensive. But a lot of stuff I'm pulling from or learning from is Dave's stuff. So go to Kindlepreneur.com and you'll see some really great stuff. And he actually uses some tools that I just recently bought from from, I think it was what is the samurai and a bunch of others that you recommended that I'm starting to use now too. And it's like taking my SEO to, to the next level, which is really cool. So if you're interested in Boom. techniques for SEO, if you're interested in the, the right tools to use and how to use them, uh, check out kindlepreneur.com. And uh, so that's Dave Chess and everyone. And thank you so much for uh, joining us today.